Acceptable margins of safety. That's my life all over, isn't it? Keep an eye out, Captain. This place don't look entirely safe. You're probably right. Great work. This unit is currently in wait cycle. Please return later. How about I kick you instead? Error. Tilt alarm engaged. Entering emergency reconciliation mode. This unit has been programmed to express despair. Please treat this unit with kindness. This unit is currently in wait cycle. Please return later. Have a better than natural day. I don't know what that means. Nicely done. What's this thing? I think it's a force field, right? Yeah, I can't get through. Okay, does that mean purple kills you when you touch it, or was the body there when it was turned on? Okay, no, it was just there when it was turned on. It ain't stealing if no one sees. Correct. What does that say? Sprat Shack. I think that's where we're going.
supplies if you need them. No one lasts long on Gorgon unprepared. I can hear sprats. Hello. You looking for supply, stranger? I stock up here. If you run low on bullets out in Gorgon's far reaches, there ain't no one around here liable to help you out. Let me know if you're looking for something particular. I take it that evacuation alarm isn't urgent. Huh? Oh, you don't gotta worry about that. It's got something to do with that scrapped Spacer's Choice project from way back. Damn, Alarm's been hollering at us for five years if it's been a day. You know, I don't dream anymore. It's all, please evacuate in an orderly fashion. What if you moved away from the incessant alarm? Folks coming and going pass right by me here. It's the ideal spot to do business. Apart from the obvious. And there ain't much I can do to shut that control terminal down. I know, because even Von Hoffman couldn't bash it in. And I seen that tough son of a gun throw man clean across the Sprat Shack one time like he were a toss ball. What can you tell me about Project Gorgon? Only that Spacer's Choice shut it down in a big hurry. From what I heard, some of their folks got left behind even. Don't seem like the project ended well. So this is Gorgon, huh? You mean you came out to this asteroid without knowing nothing about it? <laughs> Me too. Heard it was wild here and couldn't resist. Trouble is, if you wander off to somewhere you oughtn't be, like way out in Gorgon's farthest reaches, odds are slimmer of your bits finding their way to my pockets. If you want my advice, stick close to the Sprat Shack. Unless you fancy having your limbs torn off and eaten. I do not fancy that at all. I figured not. Look, I ain't stopping you from wandering elsewhere. But if you do, be sure you watch out for the Marauders. That's the number one thing. And the Mance, I guess. You watch out for Marauders, Mance, and Charles from Accounting, and you'll probably be fine. Who's Charles from Accounting? Only the meanest Marauder on Gorgon, and also anywhere else. That man is crazier than a bag of canids and twice as likely to bite. He will bust your head open like an overripe mock apple if he so much as sees you. I ain't joking. He'll snap you in half like stale bread noodles. How does he make any friends? I bet I could take him on. No, no, you don't get it. Charles from accounting is like... Imagine if you took three of the most howling mad marauders you could find and mashed them together. That's Charles. Zero times three is still zero. You know, that's actually true. You ain't listening to me, huh? Well, I warned you, if you run off and get exploded to death by a madman with a rocket launcher now, that's on you. He has a rocket launcher. About this Charles from accounting. Yeah? This is probably a stupid question, but why is he called that? His name is Charles and he used to work in accounting? I figured, thank you. Makes sense to me. Anything else you needed? Let's see what you've got for sale. Found a pickaxe in the mine like none I've ever seen before. Could be awful useful if you're the violent type. This lift is working. Okay. Why hasn't he looted these crates? This place is a mess. There's cans and trash everywhere. I do want to see if I can turn that alarm off. It's quite annoying.
Authorized for emergency evacuation. Wow. There we go. That's better. Do you think he'll give me a discount now? Is that what my thoughts sound like? La, I've been standing near that alarm too long. Hey again, stranger. What can I get you? A thank you would have been nice. Is this one working as well? Welcome user, Tran D. Notice, electricity rationing in effect. By accessing this terminal, you consent to paying one bit per every option selected. Employee Tran Dominic currently owes 9,508 bits. I can pay their bill apparently. Outgoing shipments. Ship name Perseus. Going to Edgewater. 2,000 cartons containing redacted. Three discharged staff, three reassigned staff. Alert. Manifest content exceeds the recommended maximum weight of this vessel. Ship name Perseus. Going to Stella Bay. 100 cartons containing prototype redacted. Two tons raw ore of redacted. 15 reassigned staff and it's exceeded the maximum weight as well. Incoming shipments. From Tartarus. 350 cartons containing 100 units each sterile injection ampules. 30 high-pressured steel cylinders containing oxygen. 25 volunteers. From Byzantium. Three corporate security squads containing three fire teams each. 500 rounds light ammunition. 2,000 rounds heavy ammunition. One flat containing 10 units Moonman Standy. Message from Mostly C. Mr. Tran, are you aware of the concept of relativity? This is a rhetorical question. I am aware that space's choice training does not include business philosophy in its curriculum. Consider this a remedial education. Broadly, relativity is an economic idea that describes productivity in terms of relationship. For example, from your point of view, the Argosies, i.e., your freight depot exports shipments at a perfectly reasonable rate. However, from the point of view of your enterprising colleague, i.e., S. Reynard, the Argosies freight depot export shipments at a positively pathetic rate. If a single one of your colleagues is capable of three times your productivity, then relative to your colleague, the Argosy freight depot is a failure. The rubric of your success is measured relative to your fastest, strongest, and most productive colleagues. Do you understand? Please take a moment to consider the contents of this message and commit them to your heart. Furthermore, please select one of the following reprimands below and append it to your permanent record. A. The quality of your work is unacceptably low by Spaces choice standards. B. The quality of your work is unacceptably low relative to that of your colleagues. C. By receiving an official reprimand on your permanent record, you have violated the Spaces Choice Code of Conduct, which will result in an official reprimand. Work fortifies the spirit. See mostly. Outgoing messages. To Reynard S. Buddy, I don't understand how you manage to log three times the number of shipments I do out of that miserable shack you call an office, but you need to cut it the fuck out. Mostly's been poking at the Argosy ship rate numbers again, and now he's started asking why Louis and I can't pack as quickly together as you can alone. I'm thinking maybe I should tell him you're dipping into the supply of the prototype Adrena time. I don't think he'd like that, do you? Shit, maybe you are. If that's the case, well, maybe you ought to come lend me and Louis a hand when we load up the next hall of tests subject corpses. Get yourself a real good view of what Chem's Wonder Drug does.
Archived messages from Belath Kethel. Dom, you gotta help me out. The Monarch delivery's gone MIA, and now the big guy at corporate is messaging my personal terminal looking for answers. Not mostly, not good fellow, that seersucker suit wearing M. Bear from Byzantium. Bancroft. Your kid cousin still works in Cascadia, right? Do you think he could hoof it over to Stella Bay and just, I don't know, poke around the port, see if it's there? The shipment ID is Z42ML8TXY. The transport we packed last week. I know it's a lot to ask. And you know how I feel about begging for handouts, but I swear to the law if I looked out my door that Bancroft guy'd be there in the street slapping a wrench against his palm like in a mob boss in one of those bootleg serials from Groundbreaker. Please man, you know how fond I am of my kneecaps, Louie. So there might be something in Stella Bay to find. The shipment ends in TXY. This one. 100 cartons of some prototype, and 2 tons of some kind of raw ore. Might be worth looking into in Stella Bay then. Come here. Let's have a chat. Hello. All right, inspection time. Look at my eyes for as long as you can without blinking. Starting now. Okay. Good. Look up. Now look down. You have pretty eyes. Thank you. Got them from my mother. You're doing swell. Now. Name and occupation. Taylor, Captain of the Unreliable. Good enough for me. You're cleared to pass. That was a sanity check. If you had changed like the others, it'd be in your eyes. You'd also be drooling, cursing, and making a mess of the place. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. You can head on downstairs. What did you mean when you said people had changed? Every day, salvagers and scrappers set out to comb the ruins and make their fortune. The ones who come back, they aren't always the same men or women who left. They change. Never for the better. What happens when people change? First, they get real twitchy and paranoid, shouting at folks who aren't there. Then they smell like they soiled themselves, on account of how they soiled themselves. After that, they're gone. Nothing but animals wearing human skin. Seen it happen myself. It's never pretty. Not like your eyes. Where exactly am I? This is the Sprat Shack. The most remote watering hole in the system. Rule number one, no fighting. Rule number two, wipe your feet on the way downstairs. We're the only hospitable place on this rock. I want to keep it that way. That's why we have rule number three. When people change, they stay outside, where they belong. Let me ask you something else. Just don't ask me to dance. Okay, well now I want to ask you to dance. What do you do around here? Bouncer, bodyguard, law enforcer. I make sure the Sprat Shack gets only the highest caliber of clientele. That's us. <laughs> and I thought this place was gonna be fun. We get a lot of brand-loyal corporate types, and a lot of cutthroat freelancer types. Both sides have their share of dirty scoundrels. And I hate dirt. What kinds of people come to the Sprat Shack? This is a sublight bar, so most of our regulars come to plunder the old labs. The facility's locked up behind miles of red tape, so progress is slow. A lot of time to drink and reevaluate, then venture out and try again. What do you know about Gorgon? Something bad happened here. Spacer's Choice was developing chemicals, the kind with nasty side effects. Marauders outnumber the rest of us ten to one. Either they came from Gorgon, or something draws them here. I don't know which is worse. 
This place is under a dark cloud, stranger. That's all I know. If you want the history of the Sprat Shack, talk to Lex behind the bar. Will do. See you around. If you're heading downstairs, order something sweet. Smell that? Cheap whiskey and stale cigarettes. My kind of place. Oh! Ugh. This place smells like Felix's birth. Bit rude. Hello. Lex, I assume. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. First one's on the house, and I won't even water it down. What'll it be? I'm good, thanks. So, you just wandered in for the genteel conversation. Suit yourself. I assume you're here for salvage. Not exactly, but can you explain what you mean? Most of my regulars are sublight scavengers. They pick over the ruins of Gorgon, spend their earnings at the bar, and uh, head back out the next day. Vicious cycle, but that's life. You're the first new face I've seen in a while. Do you know anyone by the name of Lucky Montoya? Lucky? Sure, I knew him. He could get a little... dramatic at times, but he was a good guy. Heard he took on a dangerous job. Spent a lot of time coming and going from the Office of Creative Incubation, just down the road. And what is the Office of Creative Incubation? That's where the top rungers at Spacer's Choice came up with slogans of marketing. Lucky never told me why it was so important. <sighs> Awful shame about what happened to him. What did happen to him? You really want to hear my story? <laughs> Lol, most everyone around here is sick to death of it by now. Last I saw of Lucky was a few days ago. I went outside for a smoke and a stroll, and I saw this wild canid dragging a bloody limb. So I kicked the canid, scared it off. And then what? Get this. The canid was chewing on an honest-to-law human arm. Lucky's arm. How do you know it belonged to Lucky? I'm a bartender. Attention to detail is my middle name. Anyway, the arm was clutching a phonograph that mentioned someone named Alex Hawthorne. I did some poking around, and this Hawthorne has a reputation among the uh, <clears throat> salvagers who frequent the bar. So I packaged up the arm nice and tidy and sent it care of the Halcyon Parcel Service. They even gave me a discount on the hazardous waste removal stamp. Why bother sending the arm at all? I figured Hawthorne would want to know what happened to his pal. Help Lucky get his affairs in order, you know. Oh, I hate to see people go with unfinished business. The arm made it to me. I'm Hawthorne's next of kin, sort of. <laughs> no kidding. And now you're here? Colony feels smaller than you'd think some days. I'm glad I was here to see this uh, confluence of events, you know? The stars really aligned on this one. And here I am, smack dab in the middle. Where was Lucky staying? Third floor. Once I figured he wasn't coming back to pay his tab, I left his room unlocked to air it out. You can help yourself to anything you left behind. Fair warning, I've been letting the regulars use it for a quick lie down. Wash your hands when you're done. Trust me. Uh. Gross. What do you know about Gorgon? Spacer's Choice used to brew pharmaceuticals in these parts. That's why the asteroid smells like an old gym sock. They say Adrena time came from here. Just down the road at the old R&D lab. Very hush-hush back of the day. Any idea why Spacer's Choice shut Gorgon down? I doubt anyone knows the full story. One day the evacuation order went out. Grunts and lab coats scrambled to get anywhere but Gorgon. And the weirdest thing of all, Adrena time still hit the market. Me, I never touch the stuff. To each their own, but I think it's dangerous. Would any of your regulars have more information about Gorgon? Roscoe might tell you more. He spent some time around here before the bar opened up. I trust him well enough. There's always Leonora. 
my favorite customer over in the storage room on the second floor. Keeps to herself and always closes out her tab. What's Roscoe's story? He's been here since opening day. I think he told me he was some kind of journalist. He got left behind when Spacer's Choice pulled out. And I guess no one's coming to get him. Why'd he get left behind? He didn't tell me and I didn't ask. I'm his bartender, not his human resources rep. If you believe the chatter, a lot of good folks got left behind and a lot of bad folks made it out. Sometimes that's all there is to it. Poor guy. Are you looking out for him? Roscoe's drinks are on the house. We all know how it feels to get left behind. He'll be all right. He's with the family now, and we take care of our own. What can you tell me about Leonora? Nice lady. Been coming around a lot these past few months. She isn't with Sublight, but seems to know the lay of the land better than anyone. She spends most of her days drinking alone. I think she's looking to hire someone, if you're open to a side gig. Do you know if she spoke with Lucky Montoya at all? Now that you mention it, I thought I saw those two sharing stories over a pint. Didn't think twice about it. I don't speak ill of the dead, but Leonora deserves better company. That Lucky was no good for her. Thanks for the tips. What are friends for, eh? Salvages must be making a fortune off of Gorgon. Damn right we are. We've got drugs, scrap metal, prototype weapons, drugs, money, and more drugs. When Spacer's Choice evacuated, everyone dropped their gear and ran. Most of it stayed where it fell, and all of it is up for grabs. Of course, the real treasure is whatever's locked up in the old facility. Until someone figures a way to crack it open, we're just sifting through dirt. No further questions. You got it, bub. Well, except this one. You run this place. Yes and no. The Sprat Shack used to be a shipping and receiving warehouse during the old Project Gorgon days. When Spacer's Choice pulled their guys off-world, Sublight moved in to uh, salvage what we could, and they put me in charge. So Sublight owns the Sprat Shack now? Yes and no. Rumor has it there's a Sprat wandering around the Groundbreaker, and he's the legal owner of the Sprat Shack. Hagen's idea. What? Why? See, Hagen didn't want a paper trail that led back to her, so she gave the bar to the Sprat. If there were any legal problems with this place, the Sprat would do the time. You know, they do something similar in Byzantium. Fancier system, but same idea. You think a Sprat could own Edgewater? Oh, oh, imagine one wearing Mr. Thompson's little hat! Anyway, that's what the paperwork says. I don't make the rules. How would you even know which Sprat is the right one? Easy. His name's Matt. Oh. The beautiful thing is, no one could tell Matt Sprat apart from an ordinary vermin. I think that's kind of the point, to send the authorities on a wild Sprat chase. What happens if Ethel Gabler turns him into Spratwurst? Never thought about that. Shit, someone could have eaten my boss. As far as business arrangements go, this one's a head-scratcher, but... They say it's all above board, so that's what matters. Does Space's Choice mind that you're squatting in their warehouse? Yes and no. We're doing a lot more than squatting. We're classing up the joint, keeping the riffraff outside where it belongs. They didn't even serve drinks until I arrived. Talk about wasted potential. Can you answer any question without starting with yes and no? Yes and no. Again, that one was Hagen's idea. She told me that speaking in vague terms keeps you out of trouble. And I don't want any trouble in my place. How do you get supplies in and out? Thirsty people come and go from all over the colony. Mostly on the way to somewhere better. Some are well-connected. And not everyone pays with bits. That's how we get the unconventional goods anyhow. Sublight keeps us well-stocked with the essentials. By which I mean booze. All right. Thanks for the information. Come back when you're thirsty. Hi. I was here before they shut the project down. Started drinking just so I could sleep at night. We're all friends here, even when we ain't. 
seen any good salvage around? No. Watch your step. Von Hoffman sees everything. This is a family business. Chin up. Look sharp. Listen to your own advice. Are you my agent on the ground? Sorry? I've been sent to meet a certain someone about a certain piece of merchandise. They're supposed to use a secret code phrase. <laughs> Can't help you. I'm just here to drink. That's the code phrase. It is you. Quiet down. You're making a scene. Quit staring. I ain't here for your entertainment. You here for salvage or merchandise? taste of the goods just so I know I can trust you you can't trust me now, did you bring the payment I don't know did you bring the goods Wow you're a humbug Trixie and worse a thief I can't steal what's lawfully mine you tangle-footed dimwit bring it up you two I've heard more than enough of your shit for one day That was my salvage, Trixie. You had no right to it then, and you've no right to it now. What's going on here? A disagreement between professionals. None of your business. I risked my life sneaking around Marauders to claim that wreck. And I didn't see your name on it. Now you've done it. Eat fist! All right, that's enough! This is a family establishment! You want to make a mess? You make it outside! But this was personal, Lex. It's a question of salvage. That wreck was gonna make me a fortune. Technically, that's business, not personal. Hey, didn't I warn you about sticking your nose where it doesn't belong? Ah, it's the same fight every day. Five years we've been at this, and we still can't agree on how to properly tag salvage. Now you two listen, this is my place. While you're in the Sprat Shack, you'll sit quietly, or I'll forbid you to come here at all. Is that understood? Fair's fair. I'll have a stout. And we'll settle this later on our own terms. Ah, it's no good to leave a fight unresolved. If I don't do something, these two are gonna be at each other's throats. I could intervene, if you like. You do that for me? Sure. It's kind of what I do for everyone. I appreciate it all the same. You'll be paid for your time and expertise, of course. Freddy, Trixie, go on and make your case to the generous stranger. I'll start, seeing as I'm the one who's been most wronged in this equation. State your names for the tavern. Oh, very formal. <clears throat> Freddy the Scab, freelancer for sublight salvage and shipping. Same as my father before me. Junkyard Trixie, also a salvage freelancer, though... I've been at it longer than Freddy. So, uh, just up the road and due east of here, there's a shipwreck lodged in the mountainside, right? I staked my claim on that wreck. Then I wandered in for a drink. An hour later, Trixie swaggers in bragging about her salvage. Ugh, the nerve of some people. How did you mark the claim? I climbed on top of it and called out in my loudest voice, Finders keepers! Is that legal? And don't say yes and no. I don't know about legal, but it's legit by sublight standards. Assuming anyone was around to hear it, which we can't know for sure. Someone must have heard me. They just ain't brave enough to step forward and admit it. What's your side of the story, Trixie? When I found the shipwreck, there were no salvage mark. See, the whole area was teeming with bloodthirsty marauders. So I snuck around and added my tag. Clear as day, so no drunken idiots could claim the salvage out from under me, Freddy. For the record, when I heard the marauders coming, I left. Trixie must have set her mark down after me. Hmm. 
quit leading the prosecution, Hullhead. Anyway, that's my story, ma'am. What mark did you leave on the salvage? I drew next in the dirt, with my toe. Couldn't the marauders have walked over it by now, or the wind blown it away? Wouldn't surprise me in the least, but that doesn't mean it ain't mine. In all my years, I've never heard a more contentious argument. I don't envy your shoulders for bearing the weight of responsibility. You've heard it from them both. So, who gets the salvage? Neither of them adequately marked the salvage. So I'd say whoever took it first is probably who gets to keep it, which was Trixie, I guess. But these idiots don't know how to tag salvage, so I rule in no one's favor. That ain't no kind of fair. She ain't even from around here, Lax. Here's a six-pack on the house, plus your fee. Maybe now we'll finally get some peace around here for a change. Does this happen often? A little too often, if you ask me. But that's the sublight way. Anything worth doing is worth fighting over. Glad to be of service, then. Come and chat if you're ever feeling thirsty. We could always go back and rile him up again later. That's my captain. Gonna puke. No, no, it went down. False alarm. This rock ain't much to look at, but it's our rock. Watch your step. Von Hoffman sees everything. Who's Von Hoffman? I wouldn't get too close to that railing, just in case. Do you uh, think the folks here like strangers? Because some of them are looking at us like maybe. I'm gonna love this place. Hello. You don't look like one of the salvagers, no? Don't really seem like the type. You've got the look of someone who's traveled far to get here and whose journey is far from over. And seen things. Too many things to fully process them all. You and me both. I don't know if you're bound for the old runes, but in case you are, can you look into something? I'd do it myself, but of course the Marauders would eat me alive. Depends on what you need. Um, looking for something out there. Been paying Sublight to help me, but they haven't made much progress. Sublight wouldn't turn over a rock unless there was salvage underneath it. Well put. My husband and I worked on Gorgon during the good times. Jerome was on maintenance duty. I cleaned out test tubes till they sparkled. Where's Jerome now? Nowhere good, that's for sure. In his final hours, Gorgon was a war zone. Violence broke out in the labs. The hills were full of marauders. You couldn't take a leisurely stroll without an armed escort. When the order came through to evacuate, non-essential personnel drew a lottery to see who would board the first wave of ships. Jerome won. I lost. As soon as I wasn't looking, Jerome switched our tickets and pushed me to the front of the line. I got to leave. Jerome stayed behind. I never saw him again. That was very noble of him. That Jerome always chose the right thing, even when it got him killed. This place is greedy. Took my Jerome, and it would have taken me too. I just want one thing back. His old hip flask. I gave it to him the day we signed our marriage contract. And he carried it wherever he went. I know it's still here. I'll definitely keep an eye out for it then. You'd really do that for me? Law, and I'll bet you're worth ten of those sublight sprats. I don't have much, but if you help me, there's a little set aside for the occasion. Jerome used to drink with his buddies in a small kitchen opposite the maintenance shed. Might be a good place to check first. Small kitchen opposite the maintenance shed. Okay. I wanted to ask you something first. Yeah? Lex mentioned you knew Lucky Montoya. That old flirt? Yeah. I let him buy me a drink or two. He talked my ear off about exciting jobs he'd done. All lies, I'm sure. He fell asleep with his head on my shoulder. That man had baggage like you wouldn't believe. 
I don't think anyone could be lonelier than me. Did he mention anything about the Gorgon Research Facility? He bragged about having the key to some sort of maintenance area in one of the old buildings. I never saw it, so I just assumed he was talking himself up. He also asked if I wanted to see something gross and slimy he kept in his room, but I declined, politely. Interesting. Was he depressed? He put on quite a front, but I think he was weary. Like he'd seen too much and had too little to show for it. I guess we were kindred spirits in a way. That's all. Thanks for your time. Sure thing. My condolences if you two were close. Tell me about your time on Gorgon. The lab coats kept quiet about the project, but the air was charged with excitement. You could feel it wherever you went. I wanted to change the world. A tenfold boost to worker productivity with no side effects? Who wouldn't salivate at the thought? I don't know what went wrong, but when the shit hit the fan, it sprayed everyone in its path, including me. All right. Well, see you. Hopefully I can find that flask. That last drink you ordered had a punch to it. What did you say it was called? Lunar Eclipse Mix. It's just pep pills and a two-hour energy brew. My ex used to have them with breakfast. Oh yeah, whatever happened to that guy? I broke it off. He wouldn't take his hat off in the bedroom. Yikes. Every time I see a Spacer's Choice advertisement, it's like he's staring at me from behind the screen. As soon as I sober up, I'm heading back to the ruins. Seen any good salvage around? Nope. As soon as I sober up, I'm heading back to the ruins. We're all friends here, even when we ain't. You here for salvage or merchandise? This is a family business. Chin up, look sharp. Huh, who's this now? Wonder if they could... Nah, who am I kidding? Holy shit, a fresh face. Haven't seen your like in years. Don't know what brought you to the most dangerous corner of this solar system, pal. But you're welcome here. Oh, you talked to Lex yet? She tell you to keep it civil? You wouldn't guess to talk to her, but that lady's got a mean left hook. I talked to her. She mentioned you were some kind of journalist. Some kind. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Got into reporting thinking I was gonna be some sort of public intellectual. What a joke. Spent 95% of my time playing stenographer to the board, and the rest writing puff pieces on the chairman's latest beard trim. Real life and death shit. You seem like you're having a rough time. Can I help you out? If you're going back out there, do you think you'd be willing to do an old bastard a small favor? Helping out old bastards is 80% of my job. What do you need? Does this involve going somewhere we don't belong? Those are my favorite jobs. Well, I've been trying to get away from this rock for five lobby fucked years, but I can't stay gone. Why is that? Told you I was a journalist, right? I was here on a story back when Project Gorgon was active. I was doing an interview series for Spacer's Choice. Recorded them all on these little portable phonographs. But when everything fell to shit, Spacer's Choice wouldn't let me leave. Terms of my reporting contract unmet, they said. You hit them, and now you need me to get them for you. That about cover it. Right on the money. Look at me, I'm no fighter. I've never even touched a gun. But you... You're just the right amount of rough around the edges. Help me get my recordings back so I can finally get the hell out of here. I'll do my best, Roscoe. You can count on me. No shit? That's downright civilized of you. All right. One of them I stash in the Office of Creative Incubation, in the projector room on the third floor. I give another to my friend Birdie to keep in her apartment, just outside OCI's upper entrance. Why there? Seems like a good idea at the time. Someone had started a fire, folks were shooting other folks. It was a madhouse. Got it. Next. You'll find another in the chem lab. It's in the main lab storage room. You ran all over Gorgon just to hide your recordings. 
didn't have much of a choice. The primals had gotten loose, a couple of them were chasing me. The recordings just ended up wherever I hid. All right, easy enough. And the others? The final one is in human inquiry and auditing. It's tucked behind a pipe in observation room B. The observation room? Wouldn't someone have seen you? What with the test subjects running loose, the researchers were surprisingly unobservant. Okay, well, I'll do my best. Strength to your sword arm, friend. And thank you. No problem. Can we talk about other stuff? Hey, there you are. Been wondering how you were doing. Did you manage to find those recordings? I literally haven't left this spot. Can I ask you something? Sure, I'm an open book. What's the deal with Lucky Montoya? Nice enough guy. Fashioned himself one of those professional gumshoes, like in the serials. Gumshoes? They usually work for the board, rooting out dissidents and the like. Lucky, though, he was freelance. Worked for anyone who paid, no matter their allegiance. You ask me, I think the guy just likes snooping around in folks' terminal messages. Who doesn't? Did Lucky tell you anything about his investigation? Next to nothing. He preferred to keep a tight lid on things, more dramatic that way. Not that he needed to keep secrets. Folks down here don't give two shits about anything but bits and beer. Come on, I bet he loved showing off for a sharp guy like you. <laughs> Been a long time since someone tried to butter me up. Can't say I hate it. So sometimes Lucky'd get deep in his cups and start going on about the ghost of Gorgon. But I didn't think anything of it. Guy also liked to say he could pop the cyst off a cysty pig at a hundred paces with his eyes closed. Gross. What was Gorgon like in its heyday? Frenetic, chaotic, vicious. Take your pick. I wasn't here at the start, but going off what folks told me about the early days, Gorgon started out with promise. The board's best and brightest were excited to work here, said it was a good posting. The project director had a vision and big, bold ideas. <laughs> Their best and brightest sure got a lot of people killed. As long as the board gets their bits, that's just the cost of doing business. Thing is, the schedules coming out of the corporate office were unrealistic from the get-go, and they were trying to do the project on a shoestring budget. Couple that with the obvious personnel problems and toxic junk in the product, it was only a matter of time before it all went to hell. How'd the Marauders enter the picture? Spratshack legend has it they crawled out of the mines one day. Heard one fella suggest they might even be aliens. What do you think? I think Halcyon wants us dead. Look at Monarch. The planet's pure poison. Folks can't eat the food that grows on Terra 2 without getting sick. Who's to say it's not something in the dirt or the water? I don't have proof, mind. It's just a hunch. Why did you even bother stashing the recordings? Someone had been trying to steal them since the day my assistant and I started interviewing. Couldn't even keep them in my safe. They always found a way in. So I took to hiding them all over the fucking asteroid. Thought I was so clever. What a fool I was. It wasn't a terrible idea. It just sucks you're not able to go out there and get them. Gorgon's a ruin now. What sent it over the edge? Shit, any number of things. Fire, primals, sabotage. There's primals here. Didn't happen all here. at once. But it happened fast enough folks couldn't respond in time. Now if you're asking how it all kicked off... Might have been spies that did it. Corporate espionage, you know. Anti-Cleos. I never did figure it out. Not about to try now. Well, I want to know, so I will. Space's choice won't let you leave Gorgon until you deliver the recordings. Oh, I've tried. Make no mistake. I've caught a couple of rides out with Sublight folks. But the board's fixers always send me right back. And I'm not about to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marauders just to fulfill a line item on a contract. You must have talked to a lot of the staff here. What were they working on? Adrena time. I'm sure you know it. it. Was a drug, something to make folks work harder, work smarter. Had a lot of nasty side effects. Didn't seem so bad to me at the time, but then... I hadn't met the test subjects yet. The whole thing was real hush-hush. A lot of worry about corporate spies, especially from Anticleos. I probably shouldn't even be mentioning it to you, to be honest. Spacer's choice? They're really not fond of spies. Well, who is? Fair point. Not even spies like spies. What do you know about the senior researchers? Not much, except that there was a whole gaggle of them. And so far as I could tell, they absolutely hated each other. 
Dr. Ambrose would hardly let me speak to any of them, but she complained about him all the time. What did she complain about? Everything, seemed like. Marion Blakesley, for example, lady who ran HIA, wouldn't return any of her messages. Not once, for years. Jasper Lowe, guy who headed up chem, was high more than he was sober. He insisted on running special tests on primals, too. Law knows what for. Anyone else? Dr. Ambrose really had it out for this guy Lawrence Goodfellow. Ran OCI. Would lose his shit if he saw red on a schedule. By the end, I heard folks were turning in completely bunk progress reports just to keep him out of their hair. Had this little minion, too. An actuary named Clarence Mosley. Obsessed with quantifying every detail of his sad little life. Mosley was the guy who got me mixed up in all this. Asshole. I hope a primal ate him. So there was tension between the researchers. Oh yeah, it wasn't just that Dr. Ambrose hated them. They seemed to hate each other, too. OCI pushed a ludicrous schedule. Chem made a bad product. And HIA returned garbage results. A regular merry-go-round of shit flying in every direction. It's no surprise it all fell apart. Sounds like half the crews I run with. Not this one, of course. Mister, I'm not about to tell you how to do your job, but... I ain't think that metaphor's fit to print. Editor always did say my prose was a bit purple. Or brown, in this case. Never mind. Not a problem. Anything else? Nope. I'll let you know when I find those recordings. Of course. I won't be going anywhere, so, you know, take your time. We're all friends here. Even when we ain't. Quit staring. I ain't here for your entertainment. What's the story with this place anyhow? Used to be a shipping warehouse. Supplies came in, deadly chemicals went out. Who told you that? I worked here back in the day. You're pulling my leg. No, it's true. This is the best joint in the system. Ain't that right? Don't forget to close your tab before you head out. Seen any good salvage around? As soon as I sober up, I'm headed back to the ruins. What have you got there? Adrena time, I think. I found some in an old busted crate. You're just gonna take some drug you found in the garbage? It's not some drug, it's Adrena time. I don't see a label. If it wasn't safe, it wouldn't be in a syringe. I can't argue Words with that. to live by. This is a family business. Chin up, look sharp. This rock ain't much to look at, but it's our room. This is the third floor, so Lucky's room should be here. Someone's in here. Oh, well. It's coming back up again. Um, let's leave him to it. Looks like an investigation board. Must be the right place. Oh, hello. Requires code to unlock. Lucky's case notes. Day one, Space's choice may have left in a hurry, but they didn't forget to lock the doors on their way out. Most of the facilities are sealed up tighter than a top runger's safe. Time to do some digging. Day six, quarter break today. Met a scavenger who claims to be a salesman for Space's choice. Sold me a key to the office of creative incubation. Let's just say this guy's about as lucid as a sprat in a Rizzo's factory, but I'm spending Minnie's bits so I can afford to take a chance. Day seven, it worked. Clarence mostly, whoever you are, I'm drinking to you tonight. Day 10. Olivia Ambrose's office and journal ought to be in the synthesis and manufacturing center. The bad news is it's sealed up and at the ass end of the canyon. The good news is I should be able to open it from the bigwigs admin terminal in OCI. Day 13. 
OCI is crawling with marauders, and I've got a few other leads to chase down, could be nothing, but my gut tells me there's more to this place than a missing journal, time to turn over a few rocks and see what crawls out, I'm leaving the OCI key in the safe, the combo is 4815. As a medical professional, I gotta say, that is very well preserved, and disgusting. You think they stick the preservative in before or after the eye comes out? I'll be honest, I grabbed everything out of there a little too quickly. Well that's very nice, and yes, quite well preserved. Who's this guy? Do you have both arms? Yes. Er, uh, Ellie. Something on your mind? Yeah, about the Gorgon job. You know I've got no love for top rungers. But if Minnie's willing to pay, I say we take her money. Right. Sure. Something on your mind? Well, yeah. I thought you might be able to tell me more about this eye. No. We're just not going to talk any further about this eye. Okay, just another body part for the collection then.